bee protect her hive by stinging an intruder, even if she dies by doing so? Why would an animal call out a warning to her herd Everybody look out! and risk making herself a predator's target? Oh no! This type of behavior puzzled scientists. What evolutionary role could such generosity possibly play in the quest for survival? For the answer, we need to look deep, really deep, into the very stuff we are made of, in fact. Proteins, their DNA building blocks, and genes themselves. Usually, our genes are faithful copies from our parents, half from one and half from the other. But occasionally, a gene is not copied correctly. The offspring begins life with a new gene called a mutation. A mutation that improves the chances of survival or reproduction is likely to be passed on to the next generation. In the 1970s, British evolutionary theorist Richard Dawkins came up with a theory that genes are selfish. It's mine! No, it's mine! It's mine! Of course, genes don't have thoughts or feelings, but it helps to think of them this way. They want to spread more copies of themselves, mutations and all, through the population. Along the same lines, a gene that would enable lions to run faster and catch more prey would also allow them to survive longer and thus have more offspring. In this way, the selfish gene can accomplish its goal of spreading itself throughout the lion population. But while we can think of genes behaving selfishly, there are many examples in nature of unselfish behavior. Altruism. That is, one organism helping another at a cost to itself. One of the most obvious examples is parenting. Parents will risk their own lives to bear, nurture, and protect their young. So how can genes achieve their selfish ends and still allow such altruistic traits to reoccur? The answer is surprisingly simple. A gene which makes its bearer behave altruistically can spread through the population so long as the generous behavior is directed toward other organisms that have the same gene. So although altruism has a cost for one member of a species, it helps the species as a whole to survive. Imagine that you are a cave person. You find a nice tree with lots of fruit. Should you tell the other cave people about the tree or not? The selfish thing to do, ugh, would be to keep quiet. Then I'll have all the fruit for myself. They might die of hunger, but I will survive. Ugh. Now imagine you are the caveman's genes. If the other cave people are told about the tree, they'll be more likely to survive and have offspring. Hold it right there. Oh, this smells of genetic determinism to me. Our genes don't control us. Ugh. Our morals and principles do. My selfish gene theory does not say that animal behavior is completely determined by the genes, only that genes have some effect on behavior. Oh, well, that's a bit different then. Ah, have some peach flambe. Don't mind if I do. That's awfully altruistic of you.